Um, how was your readathon? Let us know. Mary, how was your readathon? Great, successful ish. Like the Mona Awad books were good, the other books were not good. <laughs> I and like I finished the uh, where was it? the Star of Acre book yesterday, and it was not it. No, like a two out of five. Like I agree with Maya on her rating. I could have gone with my life without knowing about this book. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that is really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It was only 100 pages, but, uh, you know, like I would have been more, I would have DNF'd it if it was shorter than 100 pages, like longer than 100 pages, sorry. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what about you? Did you do all of the, no, you did not read all of the prompts. Or what do you mean? You? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you did all yeah, of them. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I was just trying to feel better about the fact that I did not read all the prompts. <laughs> I didn't post everything though, like the Me Instagram neither. prompts. I need to do that though, because oh. I'm still planning on posting, but I just did not have the mental capacity to do that as well this week. But yeah, my readathon went really well. Um, I had four, uh, not four, two four star ratings um, okay. that came out of this. Alice Which in Wonderland one? and then Rouge. Wait, Alice in Wonderland is ah okay. Sorry, sorry, I thought you meant yeah. No, Alice not the other one. <laughs> I was like, what, what happened yeah. between today and I? Okay, good, good shit. But the Alice by Christina Henry was the one that was. I also rated it two stars because I looked it up on Goodreads. I saw that you rated it two stars. That book no. pissed me off. Like I really <laughs> hated that book. Like. I think I read it for like the um, Goodreads challenge, like best 10 years of horror or something like that. And it um, just pissed me off. I was like, what is this? Like that really pissed me off. Like see Star of Acre, I'm going to forget about it. And my life will continue. Like, mm. but Alice was a waste of my time because it's 300 pages too. Like it's a long book. Yeah. I like, it's like, yeah, it's like 260 or something yeah so what was your book without the bunny on the cover which the one with the different animal yeah yeah i did the, the like i did rouge and for that prompt and for the read another mono one that's why you did the prompt <laughs> you sneaky bitch <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, I was like, I you read only four books. How did you manage to do the five prompts? If you've only read four books. Everything yes, makes I'd sense. I love to combine. Everything makes sense now. All right, yes. all right, all right. <laughs> and that's we. I did accept that when we did the rules of the readathon, so I cannot take it back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I also, yeah forget that I was about to say anything else. I'm not. I, oh yeah, I also wrote a uh, red stabity. I don't I don't even know if that's how you say it. It's like the graphic oh. novel of a bunny who's like a stuffed animal. Sabadi? How do you write that thing? It's <laughs> S T A B I T Y, I believe is how you spell it. It's what? cute. We have some people saying hi in the chat while you look it up. Oh, really? Wait. Yeah. Maddie says <laughs> hi. <I> hey, <laughs> Maya says hello. Hello. Hi. And then Maya says, I also read only four books, but didn't you read that oh. short story though? What? Wait, so Maya only read four books. So. I'm going to say that I succeeded at the readathon because I was obsessed with reading five, but like, whatever. No, you succeeded four books in 10 days. That's crazy amount. Yes, it is true. I could have rushed and did the, do the five, but I didn't want to. So. Mm -hmm. exactly. Bestie hello. May says hello. Hey, girl. Hello. hello. <laughs> um, Men says, I literally <laughs> read one book. That is still successful, I feel. Yes, that is more books than my boyfriend reads <laughs> in a year or so. 
She says hi. <laughs> oh, hey. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> uh -huh, to Maddie. <laughs> me too, Maddie. Period. Um, we do we yeah. can. I know that's right. The short story. Yeah, she read the short story. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like one book in 10 days is like a good amount. I feel oh, like, yeah, like it's we were aiming to like five books was a bit intense. But uh, yeah. Four is great, one is great, zero is great if you couldn't read anything, like it's fine too. Like it was just Literally for fun. Literally just chill. Literally just for fun. Like imagine, okay, like the way that we did this, imagine if we spent like a month crafting a readathon. That would be wild. I'd probably read like 25 books by the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing so is, like, fun. when there's a challenge, I'm very competitive. I need to do all of the things. So, like, I have never posted on my Instagram as many times as I did in the last week. Shut up, Maddie. We're not doing another readathon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we need a break. We need a break. But the month of June is coming, which means we could do LGBT Halloween months. <laughs> the... No, yeah, literally. Yeah. I was thinking about doing something like that, but it was just thoughts and I, was like, I can't think about that right now. What? Pride win. No, Halloween and pride. Pride win. <laughs> Bro, you're on to something. Nobody on. steal that. That's copyrighted. I have a readathon in the making. Yes, and it's gonna be a very intense readathon. So I, I can join other I can join other shit, but with who? With myself, but other people. Oh period. <laughs> just me, myself, and I. Um no, but obviously it's with like just me, but obviously every month there will be a special guest. That oh. will join me. Like that way, you know, because it's supposed to be a year-round readathon. So, like, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna ask someone to join me for a fucking one-year adventure. Like, <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's a bit of a commitment. So, you know. I mean, Maddie has already kind of like joined you for a year-long readathon with your book club. So, it's not yes, really a but stretch, right? you, you, Maddie, and like probably someone else that I have in mind could probably agree to the commitment and I maybe like my ear is like growing so big Maddie like, already knows what it is nobody you said Maddie knows what it is so she's the <laughs> only one that knows tell me <laughs> no um I'm not gonna okay. keep the exclusive in this video <laughs> for me, oh okay okay for wait, me it is oh. fun finding the books that will match the prompts yes yeah, it is fun. It, it is. is fun. Yes. Yes, period. Your mind. Powerful. <laughs> um, same mind, even if I don't read them. Just finding a book is so fun. Agreed. <laughs> Honestly, Maddie, you are my longest book to relationship ever. So. Oh. <laughs> You're my booktub wife. Oh, you guys. I'm like your child. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's it's concerning that she's not entering to my booktub wife proposal. Like, this is like, she's like, I'm out of here. Yeah, she <laughs> said. I'm not accepting the relationship. She said, all of a sudden, viewers went from seven to six. Bye. Just like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. I mean, you are the youngest out of the three, so. By like a year? No, two you're years. You're a baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're literally from 91, 96? What is this shit like? Oh, what year yeah, are 96. you from? I was like 91. See? What? No, 96. No, 96. So you're yeah. a fucking baby. In Spanish, we would call you a yogurt. Like, young yogurt? people, we call them yogurts. I don't know why. Like, you're a yogurt. Okay, period. Maddie and I were like past, you know, expired cheese by now. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, okay. should we talk about speaking... bunny? <laughs> I was about to say, speaking of cheese, let's talk about bunny. <laughs> that has nothing That's... to do with cheese, but there's no food mentioned in this book. What do you mean? There, 
there isn't a food like there's no food mentioned there's drinks but there's no food is there food yeah there's a lot of food in here jesus christ did that was it <laughs> drunk <laughs> really yeah yeah, yeah. so the the mini bar that they go to they talk about cupcakes oh yeah fuck. I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry true there is a lot of food <laughs> <laughs> It's been five days I read this book. I already forgot everything about it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Baked lemony sugar, like cupcakes. It's true that like they talk a lot of food. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All the mini shit, like the mini bagels, the mini sausages, the mini there's a tiny food place. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, sorry. Okay. I had a brain fart. <laughs> oh, also Maddie says she wants to be a yogurt. Well, you're not a yogurt, Maddie. <laughs> Flashing news. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i would like to know okay you said you rated it five stars right yes yes Great. it's a five it's officially a five I haven't changed it on goodreads but uh, it is a five out of five i love the gaslighting worked that was honestly the whole point of this readathon i mean i'm so happy that we have been successful in doing that that's all we can honestly ask yes yes now I have to go back and delete all the videos that I did in 2022 and 2023 saying that I hated Bunny. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a lot of them saying how much I hated that book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wish I would have seen that. Because it's so like interesting to me when people hate this book because I definitely understand because the way it is so confusing and how you can get so many different meanings from the writing and I get how that's like not it for some people, but for me, it is it. Like the it. thing is, like when I read it the first time, I think I it was my first Mona Awad book, first of all. So mm -hmm. I think I wasn't used to her writing, which I think is something you need to get used to. Like mm -hmm. she has a very specific type of writing, kind of like Otessa Moschweg. Like mm -hmm. I don't like Otessa. Like I've read all of her books shit except for Eileen <laughs> but like and I'm never never gonna reread her books we're not doing a real son it's not happening I have a special type of hatred towards those books so it's not gonna happen I gave it all my energy anyway but Bunny when I read it I was just confused but not in a what is going on way but more like I don't get it like where are we going with this? And I feel like when I read it the first time, I did not understand the ending as in like, nothing happens. And I was a bit frustrated by that. But now that I reread it, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> like the ending, there's so many interpretations. Like I really, really like books with many, many ways of interpreting the end. Like it's, uh, it's very good. Mm -hmm. See, I agree with that. Okay, you're jumping to the comments. Okay. Sorry, sorry. It's very distracting. I always do the same. Like, I always read the comments. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a weak person. <laughs> I know. I'm, like, looking over, but then I'm, like, focused. I, I should close the thing, but I don't know how to close. You cannot close it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Maddie says, the first time I read Bunny, I was just super confused. I liked it for the vibes, but I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. I same. I read this like almost at the beginning of my getting back into reading reading journey. Um, but you only when did you read this? Twenty twenty. Oh, let me see. I wrote it down in the front of the cover. I read this. The first time I read this was March second, twenty twenty two. So. But you only got back into reading in twenty twenty two. Like the end of 2021, like, so kind of, yeah. I mean, it's true, you're younger than I am, so. Oh my I'm God. <laughs> no, I'm saying that, but it's true that I started my rereading journey two years before you, aka when I was your oh. age, when you started your reading return. Period. Needed to escape reality. Yeah, I mean, I did it during COVID, so it was definitely to escape reality. <laughs> for sure yeah um but yeah this was my first mona award book i read it because of um uh, 
Katie Colson, do you watch her on YouTube? Yep. Yeah, yeah, how she was, like, obsessed with this book. And I was like, okay. And then I saw it on TikTok, and I was like, okay. So I need to read this immediately. And, and I wanted to ask you this, because I bought it in a local bookstore in Paris, like Bunny. Mm -hmm. And I ordered it online, and then I went to pick it up. And the online text, it said, Bunny, two points. TikTok made me, made me buy it. And I was like, was Bunny a viral book on TikTok yeah. at some point? Yeah, it was. And I'm glad. But why? I missed it. Like, I completely went, like, above everything. Like, I, I was not on Bunny Talk. I'm still not <laughs> on Bunny Talk. <laughs> I wish I remembered the TikToks I saw because I have nothing to like to even recollect from yeah. my memory to tell you about it but I just remember that I did see it on TikTok and I kept hearing people talk about it and then it was compared to Heather's which is one of my favorite movies so I was like I need You're to gonna hate that. me but I've never watched the uh, I've never watched Heather's never. I mean like that's fine <laughs> I should have watch it seen? and just say that I hated it because you hate everything I do so I <laughs> I mean, I honestly would not. Is be it the as if yet. movie? Like Do what? The, as if, like, is it that movie? Well, like Clueless. No. Yeah, I know that's Clueless. Fuck. Wait, what's Heather's then? I'm confusing them. Okay, you look it up. I'll read some comments. Uh, Sarah says, "Bunny was my first Mona Watu, Then All's Well, then Rouge. I am refusing to read Thirteen Ways. As Period. someone who has read Thirteen Ways recently and gave it a. 4.5 almost a five star rating it is an experience it very it much is, is an experience and i did really enjoy that book i did not expect it to be so like there were certain chapters i needed to pause and just breathe <laughs> like it was intense yeah. sorry i'm hearing <laughs> noises in the back <laughs> it's they come from those mountains back there <laughs> yeah but yeah, I read this in almost the same order, except for I read 13 Ways before Rouge. So and you didn't like it? No, I didn't. Makes sense. Yeah. And then Maya says, on my first read, I gave it a four. On the reread, I give it five. We love to hear it. <laughs> what now? What is going to see? And then, you know, all her ratings are going to explode just because of us. Yeah. <laughs> she would like to join the chat she's backstage right now <laughs> uh, the first time I read it I was so confused but the line on page 255 where Caroline goes uh, we're taking this but we don't have the same edition so 255 could be something else for us Oh, okay. So Caroline's talking about not understanding the book was when it clicked and then the clouds parted and I could see the light. Okay. We that is very, uh, I don't have the same edition as she has, I think. Let me see if I can find the exact quote. Uh, what edition do you have? I have the paperback. Me too. Um, but not the same one. I have the UK paperback. Yeah. It's the passage the... where all the caps come out. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Oh, wait, is that what she said? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I don't think it's 255 at all for me. Is it before or after the bus scene? It's after. The right? bus scene? Yeah, with the old lady. Oh, I don't know what you're okay hold on um she says just say it tell me what happened tell me what the fuck this means and what you did with him exactly and what then page are you on? i'm on page 255 <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> and then okay, Is it all caps? okay you found it or no? well me it's 313 <laughs> My book doesn't even go up that high. Yeah, yeah I have 270 pages, me, so I, it's, um, I found it. I found it. We're all on the same page now. Okay. Uh, 
period. And I love those chats as well when um, they, it was like kind of breaking the fourth wall. I don't know how you call yeah. it in books, but they would Same say thing. something that would like reference to like the reader. 10 out of 10. Yeah. No, but honestly, like there's so many passages in the book that could be like studied and like analyzed. Hence why as Sarah says, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> Literally. Um, and then she says, I don't consume book talk, just book two. So I learned about it from here. I don't really remember from who since it was over two years ago now. That's very fair. I'm, my algorithm on TikTok is so very much not book talk anymore because I have read too many books suggested by people on book talk that I have hated. So <laughs> I don't trust them anymore. And you are correct to not trust them. I... Mm -hmm. Super minimal. Yeah. yeah. And then she says it was after. And then Jim, not Brian. <laughs> not Brian. <laughs> Just popping in to say hi, but can't stay yeah. since I still have not have to read money. Period. You need to read it like immediately. Yep. TBR for April right away. Mm -hmm. Perfect month for it. Uh, there's so many moments. Sarah says there's so many moments in the story where characters are definitely talking about the book itself. Yep. I love that. So like, it's funny because this book reminded me of Escape and Control by Steve Holliman that I read last not not at all the same theme. Like it doesn't like, you know, it's a completely different story. But the rereadness of the book is very similar to Escape and Control because I feel like every time you read Bunny you can get a different interpretation. Mm -hmm. And like if for instance you start reading Bunny and you decide that in this reread Samantha is gonna have schizophrenia then you're going to pick out all the clues that explain your theory. And if you do it again with another theory, you can do the same and so on and so forth. And escape and control is the same because it's like it has three stories in the same book. And depending on which story you decide to follow, you interpret the other two differently. So it's like, you know, I still have not reread escape and control. I need to do it. But like it really is. I love books that allow you to experience the book in different ways every time you read them. And chef's kiss. I love that so much. Okay, so speaking of theories, what is the current theory that you're uh, like? I still stand by the mental illness one. Okay. I, I was hesitating between everything is real and there's it's a magical world and you know magic things can happen and whatnot but when the bus lady and the old lady thing happens and she's whispering the schizophrenia like symptoms and then she has this like big moment of max is doing everything i like you know max has been doing things that i have been doing actually and like you know all this this realization that's when I dumped all of the theories and I was like, okay, she's uh, a. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, we have someone backstage, like actually. Oh, wow. It's Maddie. Oh, with a Y? <laughs> with a Y. Maddie, Maddie from Maddie Moon Library. Let me add her in. Maddie from Oregano. <laughs> from Oregano. Um, okay. Maybe it's she's so coming, good. maybe not, but she's hey, Yay. can you see us? No, yes, maybe. Let me see. She looks way too fresh for 7 30 in the morning, for real. She is like fully, okay, she can hear us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. oh. hey. You're muted, by the way. And by the way, I hate <laughs> <that too. laughs> Hi, Maddie. I Hi, Maddie. Friends, that's for sure. Oh, what? Well. Hey. Is my... No, that's her internet. <laughs> okay. 
we were just talking accusation. about our <laughs> current theories on what we think that bunny is about everyone saying hey hello, welcome to hello, the chat hello. um i can share mine real quick maybe your internet will load <laughs> that would be i don't know how internet works we can but. send them to you by pigeon if you want <laughs> um well i feel like i don't know if everyone outside the discord knows but i feel like this book because i definitely talked about it in the discord but i feel like bunny everything is actually happening that's my current theory that i'm in right now um I used to, like, immediately when I read it the first time, I was like, okay, Samantha is, like, Delulu, and, like, she's making all of this up, and they're just writing. But upon, like, a deep dive in Reddit, a million YouTube videos, interviews, um, passages, like, I have, like, this book, oh, my God. Um, I feel like everything is happening in this book and like but also i feel like samantha is a little bit delulu a little bit losing her mind a little bit and i mean the thing is like if everything is truly happening it makes sense that she's also a bit losing her mind because i would lose oh, my shit true. if i learned like if i was in her situation and literally like heads were exploding and like bunnies would turn into like <laughs> I would need some time to process too, which, you know, but then like, how do you explain the fact that at the end, everything goes back to normal and that the bunnies are suddenly boring and that the lion is no longer the lion if you believe that everything is real? Right, exactly. I don't, I don't know. And like, Okay, okay. I want to get into what Maddie's theory is before we like talk about the end. Yes. Okay. Um, Maddie, what's your current working theory on what this book is like about? Can you hear me now? Is like my internet okay? Yeah, we can yes, hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, well, my theory is that like and like the details of it or do you want to try to brush over because oh, i have very I'm detailed theories that is spoiler so i just like you can say whatever you want yeah we <laughs> okay. spoiled the entire thing already okay i think she's either really in the school or she's in the psych ward and i think the bunnies are like the voices in her head or nurses or maybe they really are her friends but then also part of it in her like head and then like Ava is either a patient that she's friends with at the psych ward or she either like a figment of her imagination and the voice that she's hearing and then I think if she's out of the psych ward she's actually going to like an abandoned home and because they kind of like seem to peel back the layers of like what that home actually looks like at one point in the book. So I think that could be a, a thing. And then I think if I'm remembering correctly, there was like a pamphlet that said something with schizophrenia on it. And so kind of like maybe alluding to what she has going on. And then I think like when the, when she hears like the screaming, I'm like thinking it's either screaming from like other patients at the psych ward or maybe it's just like other voices that she's hearing going on in her head. And then like the drinks that she's drinking could either be medication from the psych ward or medication that she's just like taking to work with her schizophrenia at the school. And then I feel like Max is kind of like this representation of her work. I'm not really sure what I think about John. I have, I'm not really sure. But those are my theories. Okay, yeah, that's kind of similar to what I was thinking the first read. So yeah, I definitely see that theory as well. I feel like there's so many things to back up yeah. that that could be a possibility. And we're just 
reading what Samantha wants us to think because she is the unreliable narrator of the story. And then let's go up through some comments. And then Sarah says, yeah, I agree. Brooklyn, period. <laughs> I think everything was happening, but it was veiled and mental illness, drugs, and maybe some trauma response. Yes, 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 yes. I see that. Um, I think there were drugs involved with the Tic Tacs and drinks. 100% yes, I agree. Maya says, the ending makes you think everything, yep, once again. Yeah, the last line, specifically with the... Yeah, okay, with the mud. Yeah, sure, yeah. Samantha says the mud, I'd love to. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Like, what do you like, mean right now? It's definitely, like, have you seen the movie Inception? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. I, I only watch half of it. Jesus Christ. How do you watch <laughs> Inception? How? In what world do you stop the movie and go like, I don't know, I come out of here? <laughs> I fell asleep, but not because I wasn't enjoying it. It was just because I was tired. It's even worse. <laughs> well, well, I cannot say anything then because I can, I'm not going to spoil the ending then. That's okay. It's really well, okay. Well, the whole I don't thing know about with the, chat, but... the whole thing, yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. Close your ears if you don't want to get spoiled. <laughs> but like, the whole thing about the Inception is like, there's like they have this trinket that they spin, mm -hmm. and the trinket tells them like, if it stops, they're not dreaming anymore, and if it continues to spin, they're still in a dream. So there's mm -hmm. like, you know, another world. And to me, like that ending is kind of like the ending of Inception because the last line doesn't allow you to understand, like it, what Maya says, like, it makes you think everything again, because you don't, you don't know if she's okay. You don't know if she's out of the, you know, what she was in before. And with Inception is the same, like at the ending of the movie, like they spin the trinket and the movie ends there. And you don't, you never know if the trinket stops and mm. they are no longer dreaming or if, it continued to spin and they're still dreaming by the end of the movie. So it's kind of like the same thing. And like these type of endings are like really, really good. If they're well done. I didn't like it the first time, but I really enjoyed it the second time. Like it's really like, it throws everything off the window. Like it just goes like, that's it. Back yeah, to and I feel like this book, Bunny in particular, is better to read. Because the first time you you're like, okay, this is what is happening. And then the second time, I feel like you can go into that deep dive and digest it a little bit more because it's a lot to digest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Maya says drugs were definitely involved, period. And you said, <laughs> just here to say, I agree with Maddie, go queen. <laughs> Maya yeah. said, period. <laughs> And then Sarah says, I could see that since the girls sat in a circle class, like a uh, support group, mm -hmm. um, but I lean more towards her still being at the school and writers just being very weird and maybe a little effed up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is definitely. Yeah, things. I go back and forth. I'm like. Is my internet again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, I go like back and forth. I feel like she's partly at the cycle, but then I'm like, me, no, maybe she's like really at the school. And I'm really not sure which one I feel like she is. And that's what I love because it's like her, like say she is in that mental institution. It's like her, she thinks that she's at the school, but maybe she has glimpses of reality thinking that, I mean, knowing that she's actually in this institution, but she thinks that she's at the school. So I agree, like, with that. Not like a group, but I, like, see that. Mm. Um, Maya says the ending of Inception is the best ending ever. A woman with taste. See? We love Maya. For real. 
<laughs> Minus all the things. And yes, it gives Shutter Island as well. It I... is giving Shutter Island. Yeah, Please because... tell me you've watched fucking Shutter Island. Yes, and... yes, okay, I have. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> That's of like, course, yeah. Well, I mean, Inception is on the same level of like, of course, and you didn't watch it. So, <laughs> yeah. Did you I like Shutter watch. Island? Me? Yeah, I did. Five out of what five. About you? Okay, great. Maddie? <laughs> I haven't seen it. You haven't seen Shutter Island? No. Oh, dang. You, you need to watch it. Well, you woke up early today. You can use the many hours ahead of you to watch that movie. <laughs> Unless you work. And then, well, you should not. Yeah. I do, sadly. Oh, okay. fuck. <laughs> On a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, transport. It's the day of the Lord. <laughs> we should not work on the day of the Lord. It's the day of our Lord. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so much better on a reread. Couldn't have said it better myself. And then Other Maddie says, yes, there is so true about Shutter Island. Agreed. Other Maddie. She's now the other Maddie. Uh, Maddie thing. with the I, E, I guess. <laughs> um. No, yeah. So I do have some questions. What the fuck? You came prepared? <laughs> I told you, and you said you didn't think I would be prepared, okay? No, I said I want you to be prepared because I'm very low energy, so it's great. Okay, okay. Just shoot me up with the questions. Yeah, I didn't finish my reread, but I know everything about this book there is to know, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um. Okay, so... Ava, what's the tea like? How do we feel about her? I mean, I guess it's kind of canon what happened to her, but I want to know you guys, like, I guess kind of having a different theory than me, like, what do you guys think happened to Ava? Because the whole she was a swan thing. Well, I... You want to go, Maddie? Do I go? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I kind of just think she's um, a figment of her imagination or, like I said, she's, like, actually her friend and she's either, like, a patient or somebody who keeps, like, eluding her. But I guess I'm more leaning towards her being a figment of her imagination and maybe one of her voices and kind of, like, who she's trying to grasp and be same okay. and i think the she disappears like she at the end because she op like she realizes for a second like she goes like you know she starts seeing clearly that's why you know yeah i agree and that's why basically like ava like she ba she says everything that Wait, what was the Samantha? <laughs> Forgot the name. <laughs> uh, she says everything Samantha wants to hear because it's Samantha's imagination. Like she basically repeats everything she wants. And at the beginning of the book, when Ava laughs and then Bunny gets invited, and only Bunny, fucking Samantha gets invited and not <laughs> Ava. <laughs> the way I know exactly who you're talking about, like um, yeah. it's because Ava doesn't exist. Otherwise, Ava would have gotten the invitation. Not Samantha. Because it's True, Ava that also, laps, not Samantha. So. And also, um, there was the one part where, I don't know the exact page, but they were, it was Samantha was talking to the to the bunnies and they were, they were somewhere. They weren't like at their house or at the school. They were like somewhere else. And she was talking to the bunnies and she was saying, um something something ava and then eleanor is like who's ava yeah i was like bitch excuse <laughs> you don't know ava um <laughs> but yeah and then the part where ava had just kidnapped samantha and they were sitting in the diner with the waitress who stabs the table and 
uh, she, uh, Eleanor like pulls Ava to the side and is like talking to her. And then Ava runs off and Samantha asks Eleanor, oh, what did you say to her? And then Eleanor was like, oh, I just asked her what her childhood pet was. And I don't know, like, and that made her upset. I feel like she really did ask her that, but Ava didn't know because she's not like real. Yeah. Team. I mean, at least we all agree that whatever the theory about what's going on, we all agree that Ava doesn't exist. I <laughs> yeah. I kind of liked her, so I felt like kind of sad that she wasn't real. Well, you <laughs> liked her because she was what Samantha wanted to be. Like, mm -hmm. it's like if we all had an imaginary friend, it would all, like, they would be what we want us to be, but 10 times better. Like, truth. I'd say like, oh, we're besties, but no, it's just you improved. 100. <laughs> 100 emoji in real life. <laughs> Maddie says she accepts the other Maddie title. And then Sarah says, I'm a prepared queen. Thank you. Thank you. And then Sarah says, I think Sam was super lonely and just saw the swan and created her as Ava in her mind, as a friend, and Sam would lose track of her when she wasn't feeling as lonely because of the bunnies. Oh, okay, there's more. Uh, because she wasn't seeing her as Ava anymore. It was just the swan again. Rereading, I know that Ava wasn't actually there. Okay, sorry, my mind is like being blown at the same time. <laughs> there was actually there made so many of the opening scenes so much more interesting. Yeah. 100 emoji to Mary. Okay. You can put back the 100 emoji to Mary. Yeah. It's <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about Sarah's no, no, comments, but Go ahead. Go, go put put Sarah's comments. I'm joking. <laughs> put no, we'll comment. leave it. We'll leave Put it. it. Okay. Um, Wait, I, what was the comment? Rereading, knowing that Ava wasn't actually there, made so many of the opening scenes so much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I see that. I feel like... 100 to that as well. <laughs> oh, how? wait, how do I do that? I only... Oh, wait, I can start, right? Okay, I don't know how to... Okay, Sarah says pin 100 to Mary. I didn't know how to do that, so I just started it because it's only giving me the option to put Maya in timeout or delete the comment or ban her. Don't put Maya on timeout. I just started. it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I feel like... Uh, now I don't remember what I feel. Oh, okay, so I definitely feel... Like that day in the park when Samantha would go to chill by herself, she saw Ava and created her. And I felt like she created her and made her like into a person. So I don't, I personally don't think that every time she was seeing Ava, she was like a swan, but she was imagining that she was a person. I feel like she created her to be like a darling or a draft or what, whatever they called them. And then, what is funny? <laughs> Sorry, it just, I, I had a weird image of, imagine if Ava was a swan the entire book. Just walking around like, <laughs> Sam is just walking around with a, with a swan and like taking her to a coffee shop and just doing everything with a fucking swan. Dancing at the tango class exactly. with a swan. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. It just, that would yeah. be too good. I would love to see that. Um, but yeah, so I, I feel like, um, yeah, so she creates her and then, and then I feel like the bunny saw that she was able to create this person. And so that's what made the bunnies interested in, um, what, what was her name? Samantha. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. This, this one. Wait, yeah. no. Samantha, not this one. Jesus Christ. All these names. Too complicated. Yeah, I kind of lost track towards the end of what I was saying, but no, but I see what you mean. I totally yeah. see what you mean. And it's true that if you believe your theory of it is all really happening and 
you know, Samantha can turn people into, like, animals into people and whatnot, it would make sense for the bunnies to make them, to make her join their creepy-ass cult and to actually make human beings that are better human beings than, you know, make sense. But I don't mm -hmm. buy this theory, so... <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, it is what it is yeah definitely um okay and then <laughs> uh, sarah says i almost called sarah samantha um no i don't think this one was always around her but when she flashed back to her sitting by the pond when she showed up uh said there wasn't a swan anymore yeah, but like imagine if she was just walking around with this one though. Well, I you know this book has ruined swans for me. I have a an irrational fear of swans. Just FYI. I hate swans. I was once attacked by swans multiple as a kid and I cannot get close to these animals of hell. I find them the spawn of evil on earth. They are really the most <laughs> animals out there. Uh, there's actually a lot of fucking swans in Paris. Everyone loves them. It's like the city of love, swans, and like all of these things. Uh, and today I was running and I saw like a bunch of swans. And I was like, look at the, all these fucking Avas out there. And now <laughs> swans are Avas. Like that's, like, you know, but it, it's making me less scared of swans. Not saying that I'm going to approach them. Because I Don't still would like that. them to be like at least one kilometer away from me. So, yeah, you know, or 1.6 miles for you, like people like <laughs> with other like, I don't know if it's 1.6 miles, actually, I'm just bullshit. I think it might be 0.6. Oh, uh, it's 0.6. Yes, yeah, sorry. Well, but uh, anyway, just seeing Avas now instead of Swans, which is like better, I guess. Because I liked Ava, but it's still scary. Anyway, that was just a weird rent about swans like <laughs> really hate them <laughs> yeah they have like teeth and everything and they hit yeah and they scary. bite the fuck out of you if they do they they bite they beat me as a kid that's why i fucking hate them mm. that was that fucking disgusting they smell like trash too like have yeah. you ever smelled a swan no i never even been close to one so i don't oh if you ever come to paris there's a lot of them fucking animals so i'm a little bit scared <laughs> Okay. Uh, thinking about the moment when a bunny was talking to Ava outside the diner, picturing a swan just walking by is hilarious. <laughs> like, imagine. Um, yeah, I don't think animals oh. legit turn into people. It was just magic. Jeez. But then what's the purpose of it? Like, if it's just imaginary, like, is it the drugs that's making them hallucinate? Like, yeah, it could be. Um, there's also, I'm like trying to remember if we talked about this, I don't know, but there was also the theory about how they're like just writing the whole time, and oh, um, that's also like a really valid one. I feel, uh, I, I feel was like Rachel. the animals were do what I think it was Rachel that said this. In the what's Discord. It? Wait, what's her name? Am I fucking up names again? No, I don't know. I'm like, who are you talking about? <laughs> wait, did I? Wait, who did I talk to? Who said this? Wait, I'm going to check. Go ahead. Continue with your theory. Um. Yeah, and then let me know. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't think animals legit turn into people. It was just imaginary. Oh, see, I think that they did because in part one where they had that whole rob valentia scene where they the bunnies like went to the other room and then she heard screaming and then he came and knocked on the door uh and then she's like who are you whatever i thought that scene was kind of funny because then he like started screaming out of nowhere and then they had to like chop him or he exploded or something i don't remember exactly what happened at that moment but then um and then the other the other part where 
it was all of the bunnies and Samantha, they were at Kira's house and then they had just messed up creating a person um, or a boy or a draft or the, a draft, I think is what like the proper thing to call them is they said. And it, something was wrong with him. And then the bunnies were looking at Kira, AKA creepy doll. And they were like, okay, go handle him. And then she's like, I don't want to handle him anymore. Like I'm tired of doing this for you guys. And then Victoria was like, okay, I'll do it. And then she like, brought him to the bathroom and was supposed to like kill him or whatever and then he came out and he was like this man looking bunny and samantha was like freaking out you do you guys remember what i'm talking about did i forget or, this part of the book it was a, <laughs> it was it was very a weird part and i definitely did not notice it the first time reading it it was um My, it was like right, right before part two. For me, it was page 117. It says. 117? Yeah. So that's probably like 200. Comes, a creature comes running out of the bathroom howling. An animal man, furry skin, floppy ears, still wearing his dark blue suit. Oh, 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 okay. Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Um, what is your what did you say what's your theory sorry on this oh my theory was saying that i felt like they were actually turning people into yeah or vice that. person i mean i don't agree with your theory so everything that you say about your theory makes sense i don't disagree with it yeah but, yeah yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I see your point point right taken. <laughs> But, right but you know since i think she's just like a bit unstable in the head like to me she's just imagining the whole thing and like it's just a normal human being with like bunny ears and that's it but yeah like, yeah the but i see what you mean like the thing is like your theory sarah's theory whatever theory out there they all make sense i don't think there's an actual answer to the book and I think that's the whole point of the book, that there's no actual answer. But like, you know, we all have our own theories in yeah. this bunny world. Yeah. yeah um, who's wait, your I'm favorite like, bunny? bunny? Who's my favorite? Yes. I was thinking, oh yeah, in the chat, you guys let us know your favorite bunny as well. Yes, please, um, I wanna know. I think my favorite is creepy doll aka kira because why i don't know i just liked her who kira yeah sorry my microphone is like my ear set is like not working uh kira is definitely my fave too Manny, like, your... to be... same she's staring at us in a very focused way <laughs> she's she gonna turn bunnies. us into bu bunnies <laughs> um okay there says she hates the canadian geese me too they were at my high school like running around also biting people is what i heard but i just didn't bother with them um and then uh as told by maddie says kira is definitely my fave okay kira's everyone's fave period hey stop um and then Sarah says, I think people were the bunny boys, but I think the drugs created a lot of hallucinations rather than true turning. Okay, T, but I think I'm biased against it because I don't like magical realism. Okay, per. Um, like magical realism? Okay. That's a first. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like it. Have you okay. have you read uh this is a question obviously for Sarah because like she's the one that said this. Do you like magical realism people? Nadi with a Y and Brooklyn. Yeah, I think if it's done right, then yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. If it's done right, I really like it. I mean I think we all like books that are done right, so whatever the, the <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess for the most part, the answer is yes. 
if okay, that's good. a better answer for you. Ha have you ever read Haruki Murakami? Like the no. Japanese author. Okay. Well, he's very good at magical realism. So. No, I haven't either. So if you ever are in for a wild ride, his books are very good. Okay, That's excellent, but very good. Mm. I think I know exactly who you're talking about because this other author, um, Christine Cl Clarissa Gonawan, I think is her name. I'm pretty sure she was like heavily inspired by him. Who? Clarissa what? Gona Gonawan G. Ah, we. Oh. Uh, G O E N. You found it? <laughs> yes. We. Oui. Okay. Because it's like, I cannot say yes now. I just say we. Oui. It's like my <laughs> default. Uh, uh, I've never read anything. Oh, yeah, I have. I have read The Perfect World of Miwako Sumida. Yeah. Which was a very good book, actually. That's very fine. weird, though. <laughs> Um, Sarah says, I like Cupcake, which was that one again. Oh, Cupcake was um, Caroline, the one with the bob. <laughs> Fucking bobs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, she was very cutesy. So. Yeah. I, I, does anyone like the big boss one? I don't know her name. You know, the leader. The Duchess, oh. a.k.a. Eleanor. Thank you. See, yeah, this I've is been... why you're a better reader than I am. <laughs> no, I'm like obsessed. Like you guys don't understand. I'm obsessed. I've read House of Leaves and I consider myself to be obsessed with that book. It is one of my favorite. It is my favorite book ever. And I swear to God, if you tell me to give you a single name of any character in that book, I could not tell you. Like for fucking <laughs> I don't even remember the name of the author. And he's the writer of my favorite book. I'm Gee. the worst with names. Oh like I just gosh. call them certain things to remember. And that's it. So Eleanor is the leader for me. So she's the leader. <laughs> that's it. Don't need to I liked her, name. but I didn't like. She, she's a, um, she reminded me of MLM's bitch boss ladies, you know, like very white lady in her 50s has a big car her kids play soccer she <laughs> takes them on the weekends to do like these tournaments she does cupcake sales she does you see the you see what i'm talking about that's eleanor mm -hmm. in 20 years after bunny if she actually exists not that if she exists because that's another theory um <laughs> the, another theory is that <laughs> Well, I guess we kind of already talked about it. Well, no, we didn't, actually. Um, another theory is that Samantha created the bunny. Well, yeah. I guess we kind of did talk about that, actually. Well, I... Did we? I don't think we did. Well, did. how it, they're, like, in her imagination. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, Maddie did say that. But it could also be that... She's imagining them, but she's perf perfectly healthy, like in her mind. But she's just imagining them for her book, like they're like her characters. And mm. she's just doing a lot of Ooh, visualization of her, one. of her characters, and that's why she's, you know, and that we're actually reading her book, like that's also a thing. Yeah. Like maybe Bunny that's is the book one. written by Samantha. Yeah. So Gee, nothing, that one is really nothing exactly uh, nothing exists it's just fictional all of it like a book within a book mm -hmm. which i don't know how i feel about that but also i kind of like it at the same time I, like, I think I have... go ahead go ahead <laughs> well i was just gonna say i don't have a theory that's like a popular theory that i don't like i feel like i like all of them yeah like, and it's what I said, like, I think you can reread each time and go for one of the four or five theories we mentioned and the experience is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Maybe next time I'll read it through the lens of the bunny is the book. 
that Samantha is writing. I would love to hear your thoughts on that because. But right first, now, I'll reread Rouge. Not, I'm not going to reread Bunny again. Immediately read it. <laughs> like, <immediately>. No, <laughs> I haven't reread Scape and Control since last year, and I said I would do it. So I will reread mm. Scape and Control before. Yeah, I need to read that too. Yep. Um, Maya says, I love magical realism, especially in horror. Maya, please give me a recommendation. Yes, please. I don't think I yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Any. Magical realism. I don't. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, Sarah says, I have yet to read one that was done right for me. And that's the tea on that. <laughs> I feel like. I would I would personally consider this one magical realism because obviously yeah. my theory is that everything happens. But I but even if it's fun. not the thing, like even if it's your theory is not correct, it's still magical realism. Like mm. Samantha is just mentally ill. It's still magical realism. <laughs> like everything that she hallucinates is, you know, hallucination. So it fits in the magical realism category. Exactly. Um, May says, yes, I love his books. I hate how he writes women, though. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Like, I absolutely adore his books, but every time I need to take my feminist glasses off, my hat <laughs> off, my sweater off, and I just go like, <laughs> I hate women <laughs> to enjoy his books. Because otherwise, it's too painful. So. Mm. I, yeah, I, I think know. this is the reason why I've never gave him a full five stars on any of his books. Like, even if the book is a five star, I just automatically take one off for the sexism. Like, mm. just go, I feel that. Off. I feel like I'm too far gone. I can't remove those le that lens. I sadly have to do that every day at work. So oh, I am very good at it. <laughs> sadly. <laughs> Um, I love Eleanor because she's the boss, Maya says. Her. Um, she said, Maya says, she reminded me of Regina George from Mean Girls. I feel, I, I feel that. I could see that. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Sarah says, I could see that with the combo between the lion and Sam where she mentions he liked her dissertation, but it was very different than expected. Maybe that was alluding to it. Oh, are you, are you talking about the book being written by Samantha? Bunny is the book written. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm trying to phrase this question. Sarah, are you talking about the theory that Bunny is the book that is written by Samantha? I think that's what you're talking about. I think she is. And then uh, Ring Shao has magical realism. I DNF, so I decay where it goes but it's more fantastical oh i haven't heard very many things about that i feel like i've seen it around but i haven't ring shout yeah is it the one with the red cover mm -hmm. yeah i had i've had that book i bought that book like on my kindle like when it came out and mm -hmm. i've never even opened it like i haven't never even clicked and gone like Yes, I'm in the mood to read this book. <laughs> like, never. <laughs> I think it's the, um, at least I paid for it and the author got the the money. <laughs> oh, true. Um, okay, and then she was talking about the book yep. theory. Um, Maya says, all three books by Mona Awad are horror with magical realism elements. Okay, period, uh, yeah. Maya. We were talking about all the books because clearly yes. everyone here has read all four <laughs> <our> books. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, uh, Bunny. But more stuff, more stuff. <laughs> I'm taking the Goodreads magical realism category, and it is disappointing to say the least. Oh, what's the tea on that? Well, first of all, there's the very boring book by Matt Hage, Haig. Hag, I don't know how you say his other name, the Midnight Library that I absolutely despised. Mm -hmm. You know, then there's the Invisible Life of Adi LaRue, which I also hated. So 
you know. And there's many other books that I'm I will never read. The Lost Apothecary, Ooh. which I'm confused as to why how like how is this magical realism? But okay. Mm. Bunny it obviously. Mexican Gothic Mexican Gothic. Have you read it? How is yeah. this magical realism? I don't know. I just thought I thought that it was like a goth like a gothic eerie story. I didn't know about the magical part. Oh my god, the comment that <laughs> Wait, then wait. This? This. I hate a gun girl and wait, girl on a train with a passion. Period. Well, what do you mean, period? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I haven't read Girl on a Train, but <laughs> Gone Girl, I did enough to give that five stars. So I can't say that I hated that at all. <laughs> out of here goodbye <laughs> no <laughs> um but how do you mean you dnf gone Listen, wait told... wait did you say you dnf'd and gave it five stars yeah wait what yeah. Wait, what why okay, let me tell you what happened i know it makes no sense but in my mind it what does that sense. mean how does okay. that do, how do you what <laughs> listen this was back in 2016 okay i was i had just watched the movie Maybe it wasn't 2016. Maybe it was later than that. But I had just watched the movie for Gone Girl. And I was like, this is amazing. This is 10 out of 10 slay. I love this. And then um, I went to go read the book. And I was like, okay, this is very similar to the movie. So I can't read this. And then I DNF'd it. But I gave it five stars. So That's why I'm like, abstain, to be a girl. I will abstain reacting to what you just said. <laughs> I know it makes it makes no sense. Like, it, it makes sense, but it makes no sense. Exactly. Like, like it but it makes sense in your own Brooklyn way. So I'll give it a pass. <laughs> Have you watched Sharp Objects? I need to reread Gone Girl. Uh, me? Oh, yeah. Well, both of you. Like, yes, reread Gone Girl. There's two people yeah, in this conversation. Um. Sharp objects, yes. I didn't watch the I, show, but I read the book. What did I you did. think of the book? I really liked it. I read it in high school, though. Great. So it's been years. It's okay. It's okay. I liked it. Yeah, I read Sharp Objects and watched the show, and I really liked both of them. Okay, great. Great. I'm <laughs> the show um, does take some liberties, though, but it's a great book. And it's a great TV show. Yeah, I liked the end a lot. Oh, I don't the know. Fucking ending of Sharp Objects. It sends the fuck out of me every time I watch it. Like every now and then, I just want to give myself some thrills. <laughs> and I go on YouTube and I type Sharp Objects ending. <laughs> <laughs> and I just watch it again because it's like ah, chills. Literal yeah. chills. Mm hmm amazing stuff okay let's see to me that's just psychological not magical realism i think more tj clinton or morgan stern etc as the magical realism authors oh okay i see what you mean by you not liking magical realism then if you're talking about those kind of vibes because i i definitely get that I felt like I had more to say after that, but I didn't actually. <laughs> um, okay. And then <laughs> we are dragging Gone Girl in dark places. Yeah, yeah, in I'm, I'm choosing to ignore all of those comments. <laughs> and then the movie is good though, yeah. Uh, Maya says, Earthlings as magical realism and horror. Have we, have you guys read this book? Earthlings? Yes, it's a turd. I didn't like it. Mm. I have not. Read it's it. an experience. Interesting. Um, 
Night Circus was amazing. One of my favorite books, period. Um, okay. Maya says, Our Share of Night as well, but I haven't finished that one. I'm failing to see why, how is this magical realism? I can't, I can't remember which book that is. Uh, but Mariana Enriquez, like the, the one with the hand. Our Share of Night. <laughs> Try to... <laughs> I don't remember. I really don't. Like the claw hand with the lid cover. With the. <laughs> I have it here, but I have the Spanish version, so it's not going to count for you. Like. Well, let me oh see anyway. God. I just made everything fall. This. Oh, I know what you're talking. See, that did help me. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know the book you're talking about. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just I remember you talking about it in your video and yep. um, having the other covers, so that actually did help. Thank you. <laughs> and then it's a specific type, yeah. And then asked by Maddie says, Sarah, I would try Vida Nostra. It's magical realism to me, but really good. Okay, I have it in my TBR, so. In my physical TBR over there. So interesting. I'm interested in that one as well. My internet. I'm scared to talk or move. <laughs> but you're slaying, so it's really okay. Oh, Vita Nostra is not horror. Wait, oh, I totally missed that comment. It's not okay. horror though. I thought it was. Oh, I thought it was as well. Interesting. Um, and then Sarah says, I have our share of night, but I'm not scared. Wait, but I'm, sca I'm, I'm not scared to read it, right? <laughs> I'm scared to read it. It's so big. True. It is definitely an intimidating read. It's not something that I would recommend when you're tired or, you know, like it's dense, it's complex. There's a lot of characters. The store, like the storylines are quite convoluted, uh, and it's 700 pages. So yes. Amazing. But it's very rewarding. Okay. And I feel like it's a good book that is good to reread. It just it's seven hundred pages, so you need to you know. Got to really put your time and energy into yeah. it. Um, I've only read ten percent of it. I might be wrong, of course. Oh. <laughs> um. Yes, Vida Nostra. Okay. Adding it to the list. Uh, okay. It's more fantasy, maybe sci-fi-ish. It's hard to fit it into a genre. You guys are saying some interesting things about this book. <laughs> How is it compared to Bunny? That's what I would like to know. We're talking about two different books, though. I thought that she was talking about Vida Nostra. Oh, yeah. She's talking about Vida okay. Nostra. Yes. yes. Okay, sorry, yeah. sorry. That's, that's what I want to know. Like, how is it compared to Bunny? Because aren't they... Isn't Vida Nostra Dark Academia? I think Bunny is Dark so? Academia too, right? Is it? Well, it's about a... Isn't it about a girl who's sent somewhere? Like, I, I have not read the book, so... But I think if she's sent to a school and she has to, like, do tests, and if she doesn't do tests, like, something weird happens or something like that. Like, she doesn't succeed. I don't know. I read the synopsis yesterday and I forgot everything about it. <laughs> I thought that she was in, like, music school. Is she? I don't know. I, that's just what I thought. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Amaya um, says, it's hard categorizing these books. Even Goodreads can't get it right. You are so right about that. <laughs> um, Sarah says, chlorine has been described as magical realism, but I disagree. But it's similar to Bunny, where there's a few ways to interpret the story. That is what I agree. I, I agree yeah. with her. Like, it's not magical realism. Mm. It's on my physical TBR. So Yay! I can't wait to read it. For, for Pride Wind, you can read it. Okay. We're, we're, we need to make this happen, for real. <laughs> yes. Chlorine was a yeah. five-star for me. I'd love to hear that. An amazing book. And then you're so right with that. Okay, Magic School of Dark Academia. 
That's what I'd like to hear. Okay. I have more questions because we only got to two of my questions so far. Um, okay. How are we feeling about Jonah? Do you guys think that Jonah was real? Um, and there's, I'll just, just answer that. Do you guys feel like Jonah was real or do you think Samantha created him or like, what's the tea with that? I think he's the only real person in mm. the story besides the lion and the other woman that I forgot the name, the teacher, but the uh, yeah, the professor, but um, he's like the, um, the thing that grounds Samantha and that makes mm. her go back to reality in a way. And Maddie, how do you feel? I agree with Mary, but the last line did throw me a little too, because I was like, wait, is he there? Like when she's saying that, or like when the mud thing is happening, I'm just like, so it made me second guess myself, but I also do think that he is one of the only real people. Yeah, I, I think Jonah is real. I think he's a real person, a real poet, a real like student at the school. I don't think that she created him or anything. The last line was very much concerning to me, though, when she was talking to him and then the mud answer. But I'm like, did she? OK, is she just looking at the mud when she says the mud when like that whole thing happened? And she's like thinking that the mud is talking, even though like Jonah's sitting right next to her. So that is kind of confusing to me as well. And yeah, I don't know. And there was also a part where he says he was talking to a bear in Alaska and um, he, uh, the bear like when it was sad and like wanted to talk to a poet or something like that. Um, but I feel like he was just talking to like a man and he was trying to make Samantha feel some type of way. You know what I mean? Yes. It's it's giving me a brain, like a headache, just thinking about I, all of these things. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. I, I like, oh, now you're fucking tripping me up with everything I read. You're making me things again. <laughs> Amazing. Stuff. It also made me have a thought, though, like that the mud is like when she's talking to the mud and Jonah's there, that like the mud is almost releasing her to be present with Jonah because he is one of the only real people. So that's the other thought I had. Oh. oh. That's interesting. Yeah, because she's in this state of like being in her head and stuff okay yeah i could still see that as well that's an interesting take i haven't heard that one yeah um sarah says i i'm so confused about jonah after that last line i think he was real but then maybe the last line uh the last conversation was imagined exactly that and that's what every time the last line kind of sends me into a spiral because i'm like what do you mean says the or says the mud and like i thought we were creating these drafts from animals and now the mud is alive as well i did not know that mud was living well i think because my theory is that she's hallucinating everything like she has a mental illness i still think that the conversation took place that she really talked to jonah for like the period of time that she was feeling better and that she imagines what John, like when she looks at the mud, she goes back to her hallucinating state. And that's why the mud answers because now she's back to hallucinating and like unreal things are alive and all of this. But I still think the conversation took place. I was kind of thinking, what if it says mud because like her brain is all muddled too? And so she's like 
because like the mud is kind of releasing her maybe it's alluding to like her brain being muddled and then like releasing her back into so kind of like what I said but I feel like because you were saying why is it like animals and then it's mud but maybe it's like a play on words I don't know right yeah I see that you're blowing my mind a little bit <laughs> now with that insight um, Sarah also says what really tripped me up was when they were sitting on the bench and looked back to Jonah's four other cohorts. Yes, another group similar to the bunnies, like release Jonah's story immediately. Do you guys remember that? Where uh, Samantha and Jonah were talking and then she looks over to the other poets and then they all like blinked at the same time or something. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, true. Or everything in this book can be analyzed to fucking oblivion by every single sentence, every like, word. It's too much. Too much. It's too yes. much. I wonder how long it took Mona Awa to write this book. Same. Because I feel like I could try to spend my whole life to write something like this, but I could never do it. Just everything Same. that she said. It's kind of, it made me think a bit of the Looking Glass Sound book by uh, Katriona Award. I, uh, yeah. Which I don't know if you've all read. So I'm not going to say anything because that's a much more recent book and I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Also, I don't want to have another headache on top of the bunny headache. <laughs> yeah, I've read that recently. Okay. Did you like it? Um, I I gave it a star rating that was not very high. <laughs> I gave it two stars. I didn't really like it. I'm, I do apologize. It is a um. It's a book that I'm not surprised people don't like, but I'm happy that I like, and I cannot wait to get a physical copy and annotate it, and you know, really go back and forth with the book. I I can understand. I see why. Okay, good. <laughs> it's, uh, you know. Uh, Sarah says, I feel like I need to read I feel it. like I'm going to like it. I don't know why. Yes, please read Looking Glass Town and let us know how you feel. Maddie. <laughs> yep. Uh, Sarah says, I was not a fan of Looking Glass Town. <laughs> I think a lot of people were not fans of Looking Glass Town. Looking less up. Yeah, there's just something that I'm not going to spoil it or anything, but there's just something that I was not a fan of that happened. Um, I can I can tell okay. you later. Yeah, yeah, tell me later. <laughs> it's not um, sure. So <laughs> okay, we went over a lot of my other questions um, just by chatting, but. So Bunny is going to be a movie. I don't know when, but the rights were like sold and everything like last year. Oh, really? And 2023. Yeah. Mona oh. Watt posted about it on her Instagram. And okay. So what do you guys are like, what are you hoping for from the movie? Like, what are your hopes to get out of it? Not, not like I want it to be good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because like... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times these things are not good so you know mm -hmm. uh, and I want it sorry go ahead Maddie. <laughs> or Brooklyn I don't know who talked no no you go I thought you were finished with your thought no no I just said like I hope they keep all the weirdness in the book in the movie like I hope they don't vanilla it for the audiences mm -hmm. Agreed. Well, what were you going to say? Um, yeah, I hope that they get, I, I really hope that they get the lighting right because in my brain, I have such a specific visualization of everything that's happening to where uh, Samantha's in like more of the reality and level headed. That's very much darker to me and then when she's hanging out with the bunnies and like at the little mini bar um not mini bar but like mini cafe mm -hmm. i guess it's more bright almost too bright 
So I really hope that they get the lighting and the colors right because that seems to be a thing nowadays with these new movies coming out. They all do not have very good lighting. Yep. And Same. the I mean, it's it. Therefore, who do you think should be casted as Samantha? As Samantha? Oh my God, have you guys seen The Wilds? The Wilds? The Wilds, no. it's a show. I don't know, I don't know what her name is, hold on. Mia Healy, Sarah Pigeon, Shannon. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, not her. The girl. Oh, who plays? Bro, why is she not on here? She plays. Leah. Oh, okay. She's literally right there. Oh, she looks so different now. Sarah Pigeon, you said that. You literally said that. <laughs> yeah, her. I feel like she would be a really good Samantha. Because okay, she was kind of Samantha-like in the show. Interesting. Yeah. Is it... Um... Yeah, I was going to say Mia Goth as Ava is a great, great casting mm, i could see that and i think for samantha not, not like the stranger things girl uh natasha dyer oh like, for uh, samantha? nancy yeah i could see that but she's a bit too like too small and too you know i i imagine samantha to be at least 165 yeah, she's five really inches and in some. I don't know what the size is out there for you guys. Whatever. Like. I'm trying to think. I feel like that's like, I don't know how tall that is in <laughs> in American. I don't know how tall that is, but um, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Christ. it's a bit like five seven. Yeah, like kind of on the taller side because she yeah. mentioned multiple times that she was tall and. Rob Valencia was the only man that made her not feel super tall. Natalia Dyer is 163, so I think she could do the thing. <laughs> like, it could be like 5.5, 5.6. I don't know how the fuck it works. She can just wear like heels or something. Yeah, true. But she could be good. And otherwise, I was thinking the, um, the book smart girl, but she's very small, so I don't think she would work. Oh. I okay, yeah, I know who you're the one that about. has been casted in The Last of Us to, to play a character. Mm -hmm. I know who you're talking about. I think not the mm, not the girl who was on Funny Girl, but the other girl. Yeah, the other girl. So specific. <laughs> um, I want to feel like as a trip. Period. Yes, 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 yes. The coloration will be key. Exactly. Absolutely needs to. <laughs> Maya says, for the movie, I'm hoping they make it gory, not PG-13. Maybe yeah. something close to Lisa Frankenstein aesthetic. Oh, I've never, yeah. I did. I haven't watched the movie, so. I haven't watched it yet, but the aesthetic feels very right with the trailers that I have seen. So I really am excited to watch it. Period, Brooklyn. Period. <laughs> I don't know which part we were perioding on, but I think it was probably the colors <laughs> and the lighting um i think okay well, yeah we just said that <laughs> oh i know who you're talking about yes i don't know which comment that was pertaining to we talked about a lot of people i do apologize so yeah and so there's one other kind of thought that i had um about this book <laughs> so okay so max right he it's presumed that this i guess that he was a stag that was created or that samantha created into this max guy and then when he like showed up to the bunny's house and everything him and Samantha were having a telepathic conversation and she was about to kill him and he was like, do it. 
and then like she did and he turned back into a stag. Do you guys you guys remember what I'm talking about? Okay, I did not remember that at all from the first two reads. I did not either. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I just thought that was interesting because that also is like he transformed hold on. What the fuck was that noise? Are you being abduct abducted by aliens? Sorry. No, uh, my fiance is letting our dogs outside. <laughs> um, but uh, I totally lost my thought on that. Oh, so he was transformed back into a stag, I guess, in front of everyone's eyes to see. And then he like, but he didn't die. So that's the thing. Like when Ava, she died when she, or she turned back into a swan when she died. And so, like, I'm, like, kind of, like, what is going on, you know? Like, why did he get to turn back? I don't know where I was going with that. It was just, like, a thought that I was, like, oh, I know well, this part. <laughs> the thing is, like, if you believe that everything is possible and that everything that's happening is happening, then there are no rules to what is happening. Therefore, mm -hmm. if you die, you go back to being a swan, but you can also choose willingly to go back to whatever you were if you decide to go back to whatever you were so there are no rules in the magical world of bunny you're so right about that <laughs> <laughs> what what is it hold on 100 to marry <laughs> oh but uh, yeah amazing stuff love it ten out and slay um anything that you guys want to add anything that you want to add in the chat to this conversation mm. i was honestly thinking max really like her work like i kind of mentioned to me started getting killed because she was being reborn that's why the thing is coming back because then we're like I think. Okay, Queen, I understand that you said Max, <laughs> but I'm so sorry. I really don't understand what else you said. It was it was very choppy. Can you type what you said in the in the um, comments, and then I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Wait, she cannot type? No, no. I think she was referencing that um, it was choppy. <laughs> I was like, can you imagine? No, I cannot type. Like, fuck you and fuck me. <laughs> she said, I said what I said. And if you guys didn't hear and it, you didn't, if you don't agree, well, fuck you. <laughs> Her internet. Yes, we are having internet problems. It's really it's okay. But we're chilling. Um, well, Max, I do think that Max, I agree with you, Maddie, whatever you were saying. <laughs> you agree with whatever she was saying? Whatever you were saying, Maddie, I agree. I support I mean, it. I have been agreeing with her since the beginning, so I can only imagine what she was saying is something that I would agree on. So it's giving high, especially value. about the Max character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have any part that stood out to you that was like your fave? Well, like, the yeah. last chapter before the end of part one is my favorite chapter. When everything goes down. Mm -hmm. And I think part one is my favorite. Part two is a bit of a drag. It's the reason why I initially gave a 4.5 and not a 5 in the end. And part three, is there part three? Well, the last chapters like are highlight again. And... Very good, but part one is the best. I agree with that. It's all the build up is yep. so good. Maddie says, Okay, Maddie on screen <laughs> says, Max is a manifestation of her writing, and the stag is being killed off and reborn because her work is being reborn and transforming. I live, I live for this. Yeah, okay. I agree with oh, we lost her, Maddie. and she said, Bye. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah. No, yeah. I really like to see that. I agree with that. Sorry. And then Sarah says, I thought Max may have been more a personification of her dark uh, ideations and partly guilt that came after her helping the bunnies kill guys, but uh, that fits my real life theory of a little. Um, yes, I see that because he was so much darker than the rest of the characters. Yeah. And Ava, and I definitely felt by the end she felt guilty about what was going on. I think, I mean, for my theory of she's hallucinating everything, it's always better to think that someone else is doing the things that you're actually doing. So, you know. Yeah. I agree with that. All right. I think anything we, else? No, I think we talked about everything. Exactly. Again, like, come on. <laughs> 100, 100 to marry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, God. Well, this was great. Amazing stuff. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Mary. Thank you guys so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate you. Um, if you have Thank anything... you for everyone that participated in the Bunny Asan. Like really. Yes, yes. Thank you, everyone who participated in the Bunny Thon. And just letting me be a little bit delulu on live. I love that. And then if you have any afterthoughts, let me know. Cause I'm always down to chat about this crazy, crazy book. Yep. And I hope that you all have a wonderful Sunday. Follow Mary or subscribe to Mary at uh, Books with Avocado. Subscribe to Maddie at Maddie Moon's Library. And, and yeah. subscribe to Brooklyn at Brooklyn's Library. Yes. <laughs> subscribe <laughs> to me. <laughs> uh, great discussion, bunnies. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to end the stream now. Yep. Bye. Bye.